Hi, it's Mary, a traditional Chinese medicine tutor and an acupuncturist in Canada. Today's video explains the methods of Kung Fu pulse taking, including the time, body position, finger technique, and the application of regular breath in pulse taking. Time for pulse examination. When you're taking pulse, there's a best time for pulse examination. According to Huang Di's inner classic, Early morning is the best time for pulse examination as a patient is less affected by food intake and other physical activities. It's kind of like the patient opened the eyes and then you take the pulse for them, which is not practical because you really cannot do this for your patient. The second choice would be in and calm internal and external environment. When you do pulse examination, keep a calm internal and uh, external environment. Before taking the pulse, the patient should rest for a while, allowing qi and the blood to maintain a stable condition. If the patient just ran uh, like four kilometers marathon and then take pulse, that pulse must be very fast. It loses the meaning to identify the pathological changes. Therefore, if you take pulse for the patient, you should ask the patient to rest for a while, allowing qi and the blood to maintain a stable condition. The consulting room should keep quiet to avoid the external environment's influence and the patient's emotional changes. Thus, the exam, the pulse condition will be relatively accurate. You have to concentrate. The surrounding environment shouldn't be clouded and noisy, otherwise it would disturb your pulse taking. Another important point is, the time for pulse examination should be at least 50 beats, at least 50 beats. Now clinically, no less than one minute is proper when taking the pulse, at least you're going to palpate the pulse for no less than one minute, usually three to five minutes for pulse examination is proper, is normal. That is because when you are doing the pulse examination, you need to look at the smoothness and the reason of the pulse movement. If the time for pulse examination is too short, the pulse condition cannot be felt and judged precisely, and the hasty pulse, knotted pulse, or intermittent pulse may be neglected. The knotted pulse is the pulse. They are moving uneven. Bang, bang, bang. Skip certain bits, and then continue bang, bang, bang. And then stop for a while for the interval between the two pulsations. The interval can be changed, not the same length. If it's not the same length, the pulse is slow. Without the same interval, we call it not to the pulse. If the pulse is slow, but with the same interval, with the same length of the interval, we call it the intermittent pulse. So if you don't palpate it long enough, you are going to miss this idea. If you are just palpating how many times the position within a minute, you can count 20 seconds time three, or you can count 30 seconds time two. You can find how many positions in a minute. That will give you an idea about the rate of the pulsation. It's a slow pulse or a rapid pulse, or it's a racing pulse but it cannot give you the idea it's an even pulse or it's an uneven pulse or it's a knotted pulse or it's an intermittent pulse. So minimum one minute is required, but normally you're looking at three to five minutes for a pulse examination. Position of the body. Regarding the position, in pulse taking, a patient should sit or lie on their back Two positions are all right, sit or lie but on their back. Extending their forearm forward naturally and keeping the arm on the same level at the heart as much as possible. 
When taking the pulse, the physician should sit on the lateral side of the patient. I know a lot of people, they, they sit face to face with the patient. That's not the regular way of taking pulse, even though you might still able to do it somehow, some position to do it, but usually sit on the lateral side of the patient. This is the regular way of taking pulse. If you do face to face, if you can manage it, I don't see there's a problem. But the standard way, like uh, we do cupping, we say the best practice. You can do cupping many different ways, but there's a one way most effective. The best way of doing it is sit side by side. You will see it's more convenient. The patient's hand should be placed the palm up on a soft cushion, which stretches the twinkle thoroughly, makes the qi and the blood circulate smoothly, and is convenient for taking the pulse. You can prepare a cushion. Any kind of cushion is fine. So you put your hands on top of it. When you put hands on top of it, you see there's a curl here. The pulse can be exposed fully. If you go like this, if you put in a flat position, you see it kind of flexed. It will influence the pulse taking. It's not that accurate. It's better put your palm up like the picture show on this position. You see with this nice curve, the pulse can be exposed appropriately. You can prepare any kind of cushion would be all right as long as you can stretch the twinkle salary, it will be much easier to find the pulse. Finger technique. Using the finger technique correctly and to the standard is crucial to identifying the pulse condition. The standard way, the best practice is using the three fingers together. We are going to talk about how to locate the finger the arrangement of the fingers, the position of the finger, the movement of the finger, and there's a full pressing and an individual pressing. So-called finger location refers to how to locate those fingers. When taking the pulse, the physician sits on the lateral side of the patient. Pulse on the left hand should be taken by the right hand and vice versa. So if you're taking patient's left hand, you use your right hand. And if you palpate the patient's right hand uh, pulse, you should use left hand. For taking all the uh, pulse, first, the physician's middle finger locates the guan position. That is the wall of the bone prominence, high bone, which is called locating guan with middle finger. Then the index finger is used to locate the chun, while the fourth finger is on the chi. That's the, the three fingers here. In pulse taking, the physician should arch their fingers about 45 degree. Arch it to 45 degree. The picture here might show you a good idea about uh, what it look like. You arch it, not straight, but arch it to 45 degree. Line them up and feel the pulse with the finger eye. Finger eye is the juncture between the fingertip and the belly. That's the specific part of the fingertip. I'm talking fingertip, but it's not really the tip part. This finger eye is the juncture place between the fingertip and the belly. That's why you need to use 45 degree arch your finger. Otherwise, you cannot use the finger eye part to sense the pulsation of the pulse. The finger eye is sensitive and easy to move to find where the pulse can be felt clearly. This is most sensitive part, the finger eye. So you use this part to feel the pulsation. The distance between the three fingers should be adjusted according to the patient's height and the width of the physician's finger. For a tall patient, and the physician with tiny fingers, that's possible. There is a big space between the fingers. But if you have a big finger, the space between the fingertips would be much closer. So just according to the situation to adjust your finger position. About the finger movement, for a child, because a child's pulse area is very short. When a young child's pulse is taken, because they often cry, 
So usually you only locate the guan with one finger. You can use thumb or index finger. That is for the child. If the child is under three years old, you can look at the index finger to look at the venous or the collaterals of the index finger to check the patient's condition. The venous on the collateral of the young child is another way of helping diagnosis because the venous are also branches from the lung channel. But if you really want to detect the child, you can use one finger to locate the guan to find it. Use the similar ideas, like if it's a heat syndrome, the pulse must be full, forceful, running faster. If it's cold syndrome, it must be slower. The movement is slower. It would be weak. We can use the same principle to analyze the result, but use one finger instead. Finger movement refers to utilizing the strength and the movement of fingers to feel pulse conditions. This also called lifting, pressing, and searching. The pulse is not always in the same place, so you need to feel it, move the fingers to feel the pulsation. There are three types of strengths you are going to use. First, we call the lifting. Lifting refers to press softly on the skin. Finger touch on the skin, that's lifting. It, it palpated the superficial part of the radio pulse. Pressing is to press with heavy pressure until touching the bone, so pressing very hard. Some pulse can only be found when you press until the bone. That kind of pulse, we call it hidden pulse, very deep one. There has a certain severe disease will have that kind of pulse. And in between the lifting and the pressing, there's space in between. You are going to search in the space. You are using the pressure, not too light, not too heavy, in medium pressure, to search the place where it throbs most strongly with moderate pressure. We call it searching. You are searching how deep you can find the pulse where it throbs most strongly. That's the three readings. Each finger will have these three depths, lifting, pressing, and uh, searching. By searching a more obvious pulse condition, which is the place where it throbs most strongly, can be detected. And at the same time, the depths of the pulse condition can be understood. When you pop it, you find, oh, very deep, I can find it. That's a deep pulse. If a little pressure, you can find it, that's a floating pulse. By moving the finger, press softly, press heavily, and press immediately, you will find the depths of the pulse. In pulse examination, one should feel the pulse changes in applying the methods of lifting, pressing, and the searching. So each time when you palpate it, you need to change the finger pressure to feel it. Some pulse, all position, lifting, pressing, searching, you can find it. They're always there. But some pulse, when you lightly push on it, it's there. If you push a little harder, it becomes empty. The pulse, they have different nature. It's not uh, the pulse always there at the same depth. It's not. So we will be carefully focused on our fingertip and feel the response in different depths, the response to the fingertip. Now, important concept called full pressing. The three fingers line up and press with the same strength is called full pressing. You see the three, you press with the same pressure. This is the most frequently used method in pulse taking, used to observe the general features and the changes of the pulse condition of both hands at three portions. You use light pressing heart in the middle to feel the pulse change. This is called full pressing. There's another one, it's called individual pressing. It means using a finger to feel the pulse of one portion, often adopted in combination with the full pressing. So when you are palpating it, you feel, oh, 
one pulse is unusual. Let's say I'm feeling the qi pulse. I feel the qi pulse is different. So I want to know more about the qi pulse. In this way, I'm pressing, even though you might not see it, but I'm pressing my fourth finger deep now. With other two fingers still keep at the original place. Sometimes people do like this. When they want to find the individual chun guan qi pulse, they use one finger, they lift up and they use one finger to search for it. It's not the standard way of doing so. For the individual pressing, you still keep the shape of the arrangement of the three fingers. Only one of them are using the force. For example, now I'm using the index finger. If I feel this pulse, it's a very superficial. So let's push it in a little bit. If I push it in, whether or not it is still there. If I push it in, it's still there. It's an excess type. If I push it, push it in a little bit, but uh, it disappeared as though there's no root. You will know the pulse is floating. But while I'm pushing the index finger in, my other two fingers, the middle finger and the fourth finger, are still in the position. I didn't lift them up. I didn't go like this. Regular breath. Let's see what is the regular breath. We need to know what's regular, what's normal, and then what's abnormal. The regular breathing is comprised of inhaling, exhaling, and the intervals in between the inhaling and the exhaling. There is a break or rest or interval between the inhaling and the exhaling. It is required that when taking the pulse, a physician should breathe evenly and calmly and concentrate their mind on their three fingers, counting the patient's pulse beat silently within one breath. Usually, the classic literature often says that five beats in one breath are considered normal. Normal situation is the five beats. If less than five, like a four, four is already considered to be slower. We call it moderate. Less than four beats is slow. Over five beats and less than seven beats are considered to be rapid. A racing pulse is one with more than seven per breath. That is the traditional ways of counting the rate of the pulse. Because the old days, we don't have watch use that often, not to say the timer. So they use the practitioner's own breathing to count the patient's pulse rate. But uh, now, with a watch, things become easier in order to count the beat. As always, you can use your own breath, like within one breath of yourself as a practitioner to decide the patient's rate is faster or slow. You can do that. It takes practice. Some people might find it difficult. If you find it is difficult, it's fine. You can use the watch or timer to count the rate. In terms of count the rate of the pulsation, for this specific angle aspect, you can count 15 seconds, then times four, you get the beats in one minute, or count 20 seconds. Time three, you get the beats in one minute. If it's less than 60, you can suspect the patient has a slow pulse. Usually it's 60 to 90. If it's more than 90, but less than 120 beats a minute, it's a rapid pulse. The pulsation is more than 120 beats per minute. That's a racing pulse. That's too fast, 120 per minute pulsation is too much. That's called a racing pulse. Just by the pulse rate, you can know what's a slow pulse, what's rapid pulse, and the racing pulse. If you find this video helpful, please give me a like, subscribe to it, and share it with others. See you in my next video. All the best.